Hey everyone, thank you so much for coming to my channel and for clicking on this video. If you're new to my channel, my name is Melissa and I am a nursing student at Chamberlain University. Today I have on my Chamberlain sweatshirt. I don't know if it's backwards, if you can see it. If you like this sweatshirt, I did not get it from Chamberlain. I actually got it custom made on Etsy and I will put a link down to the shop below. You can get sweatshirts from like high school, college, sports teams, anything. They make it custom made, but I think this shop really just does for nursing students. So no matter what college you go to, you can go on Etsy, you can type in the college and you can order it online. So I wanna get right into today's video. Today's video is going to be about the structure of Chamberlain's nursing program. I have been talking about Chamberlain in my last couple of videos, just because that's the school that I am attending for nursing school. And I've kind of mentioned how the layout of Chamberlain is and how classes are, but I wanted to make a full video detailing the structure of the program, how classes are set up and everything having to do with that. So to get started, just a very short background of Chamberlain. It is a nursing school. You can go there for a traditional BSN. So if you don't have a nursing license, you wanna get your BSN, you can go to Chamberlain. If you do have a nursing license, maybe an associate's degree, so you are an RN, but you wanna get your BSN, you can also go to Chamberlain. And if you already have your BSN and you wanna get a master's, you can also go to Chamberlain for that as well. So they have master's programs, bridge programs, and then they also have a traditional program, which is what I happen to be in. Chamberlain is an accredited school, and I'm not gonna get into all of that in this video, but if you are looking at nursing schools and you don't know what it means to be accredited, please go look it up. You really don't want to go to a school unless it is accredited. For this video, I'm specifically going to be talking about the structure of the traditional BSN program because that's the program that I'm in and that's the only one that I really know full details about. If you wanna look up the other programs and the structure of how they're set up, you can just go onto Chamberlain's website. You can also go onto Chamberlain's website to see the structure of the traditional BSN program just for more reference after you watch this video. This is just me kind of breaking it down really quickly. I'll give you some things that are not on the website and I'll also give you just my personal, like what I found out through my personal research and what I found out through experience so far. So the traditional BSN program with Chamberlain University, no matter what campus you are on, is a three-year program. Chamberlain does have traditional semesters. So each semester is 16 weeks and each semester is broken into two halves of eight weeks. So each semester consists of two eight week terms. So applications are accepted on a rolling basis, meaning that there is no one day or two days of the year that there are application deadlines. You can fill out an application any day of the year and you can submit it to Chamberlain for review any day of the year. Um, they have multiple start dates throughout the year. So they actually have three semesters throughout the year. There is the spring semester, the summer semester, and the fall semester, which is different than a traditional four-year university that just has a spring semester and a fall semester. The reason why Chamberlain does this is because they are open year round. So there is no long break for Chamberlain of two to three months during the summer. Chamberlain has classes throughout and you don't have the option of taking a break during summer. The only breaks in the program throughout the year are there's one spring break for one week and it's typically the last week of April or the first week of May. And then you get two weeks off at Christmas time. So this year I have off the week before Christmas, then Christmas falls on a weekend, and then I have off the week right after Christmas. So that week between Christmas and New Year's. And then after New Year's, I will return to classes. In addition to those two breaks, you do get a couple of mini breaks throughout the year. So for 4th of July, we had off on that Monday. For Labor Day, we'll have off on a Monday. But other than just having a three-day weekend occasionally, the only breaks that you're going to get throughout the year are your one-week spring break and then your two-week break in the winter. So the structure of the program is a traditional daytime program. Um, there are certain options available to certain campuses. So I did look this up and there is a weekend and evening option available to 10 campuses throughout the nation. One of those campuses includes mine. I am doing the evening and weekend option and I attend Tyson's Corner. I cannot remember off the top of my head what the other campuses are that offer the evening and weekend option. 
but you can check it out on Chamberlain's website. I will say that it is very convenient to have an option. So I could have done a traditional daytime program where all my classes would be during the day, like during the weekday, typical like regular school hours, but I do work full time. So the evening and weekend option was available to me and I took it. So all that that means is that all of my classes are in the evenings. And then once I start clinicals, my clinicals will be happening on the weekends. So Chamberlain does allow you to transfer in with credits, and I've touched on this in previous videos, or at least one previous video. You can transfer into Chamberlain with credits. You can get all of your prerequisites out of the way, or you can get some of them out of the way, and then take them to Chamberlain to evaluate. And if it meets some of Chamberlain's course requirements, then they will take out that credit. It will not affect your GPA, but it will show on your transcript that you've completed that credit and you do not have to take it at Chamberlain. The benefit of doing this as with any school is that you can save a lot of money if you go to your local community college and you knock out your prerequisites rather than going to Chamberlain, which is a university and it's a private school, it's very expensive. So it is a cheaper option to transfer in with credits. However, this does not necessarily mean that you will graduate any faster, unfortunately. So with most schools, when you transfer in with credits, they would allow you to graduate faster because you don't have to take those classes, obviously. But Chamberlain is already an accelerated program. So where most traditional universities for their BSN are four years, Chamberlain is three years. So even if you transfer in with all of your prerequisites, the fastest that you are able to complete the program is two years and four months. The reason for this is because Chamberlain's system, the way that they're set up, is that you're doing one clinical rotation at a time. And I don't know how other schools do this. I actually didn't research other schools to see what their clinical rotations are. But for Chamberlain, you're doing one clinical rotation at a time. So there's really like a one and a half year span or time frame where you're gonna be taking one class at a time. So like I mentioned earlier, two eight week sessions make up one full semester. So once you start clinicals, every eight weeks you will be rotating. So for one eight week span, you will only be taking one class, which is your clinical. And then when that ends, you will be taking another class. You don't have the option to double up on classes at this time. And because you can only take one class at a time for so long in the program, it really does elongate the amount of time that you have to be in the program. So like I said, even if you transfer in with all of your prerequisites out of the way, the fastest amount of time that you can complete the program is in two years and four months. And then of course, if you transfer in with no credits or if you have to tackle some prerequisites, then of course your time will be longer and it will be closer to the three years. So in terms of the structure of classes, I definitely detailed this in a previous video. I think I detailed it in my video after I finished the first half of my first semester, so my first eight weeks. Right now, I'm still in my first semester. I'm in the second half of it, so I'm in my second term for the program. I'm kind of far out. I really won't be able to start clinicals until the like first half of 2022, so I still have a ways to go. But at least right now, I can talk about the structure of traditional classes. So I can't speak on the structure of clinicals yet, but I can speak on the structure of prerequisites. So like I said, there are eight weeks each term. So each course that you take is going to be taken for eight weeks. But before your class starts, the week before your class starts is called preview week. So during preview week, you can sign on to your account in Canvas and you can see or preview the syllabus, all of your assignments, the calendar and when everything is due. And so essentially you have a week to kind of get acclimated, get your books and to work ahead if you want to. Some professors will make everything in the course available during preview week, which is really awesome if you want to work ahead. Other professors will let you know, like you have a discussion board post, you have an assignment, but the assignment or the discussion board will be locked until the week of that assignment being due, if that makes sense. So I have two professors right now, and this is really frustrating because I like to work ahead, but two of my professors right now only make things available the week that they are due. So I really don't have the option of working ahead, but if you have a professor that's more chill and they make everything available, like I did last session, then you can really use preview week to get ahead of your work. 
Depending on what class you are taking, your class will consist of one discussion board post a week due on Wednesday. So your initial post will be due on Wednesday. And then you will have to respond to one to two other students posts per week. And you cannot post more than once in a day, or you can post more than once in a day, but they want you to do multiple posts over the span of different days. And that's how you will get graded. Typically each professor wants you to put one scholarly source in each post, one to two scholarly sources in each post. So when you put your initial discussion board post, you have to put down a scholarly source, scholarly scores, oh my gosh, scholarly source, sorry, in addition to using your textbook as a reference. And then when you're going to comment on another student's posts, you'll have to put at least one scholarly source on their post, so on your comment to their post as well. And then your assignment at the end of the week, it just depends on what course you're taking. If you're taking like an English class or a history class or a sociology class, you will typically be asked to submit a full paper anywhere from like one to five pages at the end of the week. If you're taking like a math class, I just finished a math class, then you will have modules, so certain assignments that you have to submit. So when I was taking my math class last term, I had to do a discussion board post every Wednesday, and then I had to comment on other people's posts throughout the week. And that was in addition to having to complete math assignments. So most weeks I would have eight to 10 assignments that I had to complete on top of my discussion board posts. So pretty much it's sectioned out. Each week you will have assignments due by the end of the week and the end of the week constitutes as Sunday evening. So each week starts over on Monday. So Monday, things will be made available for you to start working that week and everything will be due by Sunday. Because Chamberlain is really flexible with students and is willing to work with students because they understand that we have other obligations like jobs and children and just other things, professors do accept late work at Chamberlain, which is amazing. However, of course, they accept it with a penalty. So I've attended universities where late work is not accepted at all. If you submit it even five minutes late, you will get a zero on the assignment or it will just not be graded, which is the same as a zero. But with Chamberlain, they will accept it, but I believe the system is that you're docked 10 points every day that it's late. So if you turn in your paper a day late, it'll still be graded, it'll still be evaluated, but the highest that you can get is a 90%. So that's pretty awesome considering that you're in nursing school, they want you to manage your time. You really shouldn't be turning in late work anyway, but life happens. So if you happen to be late a day or two, you can still get an A or B on your assignment. So in a nutshell, that is the structure of Chamberlain from the broader picture of just the program to each individual class. That is how it is organized. Like I said, when I get further into the program and I start doing clinicals, I will make a video on how that is structured and how it works. But for right now, I am taking care of the prerequisites that I have to do. I transferred in with quite a bit of prerequisites just because I have two previous degrees and it doesn't matter how many credits I had in my last two degrees. They only look at which credits are able to transfer into their program. So I got a lot of prerequisites out of the way, but I still have a pretty fair amount to take. I was also able to test out of three credits and I plan to attempt to test out of about six to nine more credits. So even with all of that, even with me transferring in with a bunch of credits, the absolute earliest that I will be able to complete the program would be, I believe it's something like two years and six months or two years and eight months. So I still have quite a ways to go. If you are interested in following my nursing school journey, please follow me, please like my video and please subscribe. If you have any comments or just anything you would like to know, please just comment down below. If you want my email or my contact information so that we can stay in touch because you're also a nursing student, I've actually met quite a few Chamberlain students through making videos, which is really exciting. But if you want my email or any information, just comment down below and we can communicate and share stories and be a support system to each other. And until I see you guys in my next video, have a great day and thank you for watching.